The hydrologic cycle is a model that shows us how water moves throughout the Earth's system. Notably, the quantity of water on Earth does not change. It simply moves around. The same amount of water exists on Earth today as there was a thousand years ago. And if we fast forward 10 million years into the future, we will have essentially the same amount of water. Figure 6.1 in your textbook shows a pretty good model of the hydrologic cycle. We can see here that liquid water can change into a gas as water goes from oceans and undergoes evaporations and turns into atmospheric moisture in the atmosphere. Further, in the atmosphere, that water can undergo condensation and form clouds. And the clouds can release liquid rain as precipitation, which may fall down again to the surface to surface water, like lakes and ponds. Of course, some of that precipitation also falls directly back to the ocean. Surface water may flow through runoff back to the ocean, or perhaps it infiltrates down into groundwater. From the groundwater, perhaps plants take up that water, or perhaps it flows through groundwater flow back to the ocean. Indeed, water circulates all throughout the Earth system, and this continuing cycling of water is called the hydrologic cycle. As we study the hydrologic cycle, we'll see that there's pools where the water hangs out, like the oceans and the surface water and the atmospheric moisture, etc. And then there's also processes that move water from one place to another, from one pool to another like evaporation and condensation and groundwater flow and runoff, etc. Here's another diagram also showing the hydrologic cycle. It's very similar to ours. You can work your way through this model as well. Both of these diagrams are pretty informative. However, as part of this week's assignment, we're going to build a more robust model that we can use throughout the course to study the hydrologic cycle. We're going to build what's called a pool and process model. In a pool and process model, we make a distinction between the pools, where the water hangs out, and the processes, which move the water from one pool to another. We will represent the pools with boxes, and the processes with arrows that go from one box to another. Remember also that a model is a simplification of reality, so we won't necessarily be including everything we know about the water cycle in our model, but we'll give it our best shot. Let's go back and look at your textbook diagram of the hydrologic cycle and see where a good place to start our model would be. One kind of obvious place to start would be here in the ocean, where over 97% of the Earth's water is located. So the ocean is a good pool for our model, and the process which water comes out of the ocean would be evaporation. Now careful, water does not go directly into clouds as water evaporates from the ocean. The next pool that water is going to enter is called atmospheric moisture. I find it kind of strange that they don't have that on this model, as that's the actual title of the chapter. But anyway, water goes from the ocean pool through evaporation to atmospheric moisture. From there, it can undergo another process, condensation, to reach the cloud pool. Let's see what this would look like on a pool and process model. So we've started with our ocean pool, and this pool up here will be atmospheric moisture. Good enough. <laughs> and the process we could name is evaporation. In this week's assignment, this is what you'll be doing. You'll be, be creating a pool and process model, 
perhaps using this program on the, the web whiteboard. And your model will have probably six pools and eight processes. I've given you a head start here as I've identified three of the pools and at least one of the processes. So you'll just continue on from here developing your own model. One other hint is that remember every pool must have at least one arrow in and one arrow out. If pools only had arrows in and no arrows out, eventually all the earth's water would end up in that pool. So just be careful that each of your six pools has at least one arrow in and one arrow out. All right, you're all set. Continue on with the next video clip. And then when you're done with the video clips and working on the assignment, you might want to come back to this video clip to get yourself started on the model.